Do you know, I'm gonna have to tidy up these wood racks at some point. Things just get dumped on here. Now then, what have I got? What am I looking for? Somewhere in here, or on this, is a piece of an old cupboard, kitchen cupboard. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. My favourite base car that I made, I don't know, about 10 years ago, but to be honest with you, could do with a bit of refining. That truss rod looks like it's pretty well jammed in there. The truss rod is completely stuck, so that is a bit of a problem. And I was just thinking, I've never really liked this fretboard, so why don't I take it off and replace it? This needs drastic measures. Now look, I'm sorry, if guitar butchery bothers you, you might have to look away. <laughs> Let's get going. Hello there, and welcome to episode three of my bass guitar refit. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be cutting the fret slots in this lovely walnut fretboard but in order to do that I need to make myself a fret slotting jig or fixture whatever you like to call it and I'm going to use this piece of wood this sort of conti board wood which is from an old kitchen cupboard as the base because it's nice and flat I've also got this off cut from the oak pew that I cut up last episode for the, the neck. Uh, I'm going to be using that as well. I'm also going to be using this strip of aluminium which I bought from a local DIY store. Um, this is going to be my uh, gauge if you like for the fret positions. So let's get going. Now to show you what I've got in mind let me show you my current fret slotting jig. This is for a, a six string electric guitar. Now, this basically consists of this platter in the middle, which will slide backwards and forwards, and uh, this gauge on made of aluminium with a load of holes cut in it on the bottom there. And simply, I've, I've just got, if I can get this out, he says, I'm sure it will come out. I'll come out that way. Just a, a nail in there. I hope you can see that. Just a little, a little nail that sticks through, and that then just registers in the holes. He says, <laughs> trying to get it back in again. Right. So this just sort of locks in position, and I can saw the frets. Now then, the actual fret cutting area is a slot that's big enough to take my fret cutting saw and I have this plastic uh, stop on it uh, set at sort of three mil um, so I've got the slot wide enough to accept that and uh, the beauty of this means that I, I don't have to worry about the height um, of the slots there uh, because this will stop the saw going too deep into the, uh, the fretboard and basically it's just a question of running backwards and forwards there and cutting the uh, the frets. So that's the theory. Um, I need to make a new one of these. One of the problems I've had with this uh, jig is getting those holes drilled in exactly the right place. And you can see I've actually ha uh, put some a bit of sort of uh, aluminium doweling in there and re-drilled some of these holes because my two mil drill even in the, the drill press there, wandered. So this time I need to come up with a new idea for drilling holes. Now the answer I hope lies with this block of waste wood, a piece of steel and two pieces of aluminium. Now then, what I intend to do is to mount these three pieces on that piece of wood like that 
so that I can slide this aluminium bar through it. Now I'm going to have to drill a hole accurately in the middle there, but I'm hoping once I've done that, when I drill through into there, the steel is going to keep the drill absolutely rock solid. First of all, I'm going to drill two 3mm holes on the edge of this block of uh, steel here, just to uh, use to attach this to the base. I'm now going to switch to a 2mm bit and drill a hole in the centre. Okay, so I've got the holes drilled now and I've just filed the burrs off the back. So I'm going to position this on the two aluminium pieces. So the aluminium pieces at the side here are going to act as guides. And um, I just need to mark some positions for holes. Just going to cut myself a couple of bits of. Uh, ply here just to act as guides. I was watching Bing Crow last night at Crimson Guitars restoring an old saw, I think an old dovetail saw, and he was saying you know you can pick these vintage tools up in uh, local markets and things and he's absolutely right. I picked this up in um, I think it was like a charity uh, market whatever. Um, they got it up there for a couple of pounds. I think I probably paid five pounds in the end for it. And it was all rusted up, but my goodness me, once it uh, cleaned up, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, just need, needed sharpening. It's actually got, it's got woodworm in it. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. Um, this is a Spear and Jackson, um, but yeah, one of my favorite saws. Of course I should have said, it had woodworm in it. I don't think there's any woodworm in it now. Anyway. That beautiful. Do another one the same size. Now the interesting thing about sort of jigs like this is that although the end game is to get something that uh, produces a very accurate result, the actual jig itself doesn't need to be that accurate. And um, I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so let's try and assemble this now. I want to be able to clamp this down, so um, I'll push it towards the top there. And that should enable me to do that then. So let's screw these in first. Tighter than perhaps I wanted it, but I think that'll be all right. Now then, still have a pilot holes. They're so solid now I can't move the thing so what I'm gonna to have to do is put a couple of little washers I think underneath these screws. Okay so let me show you how I intend to use this and um, 
we'll see if it actually does the job. So now it's quite a long piece of aluminium, so I'm going to use the end just as a test piece. So all you need to imagine here is that I've got to mark off the fret positions all the way down this piece of aluminium rod. And I'm going to do that with this um, scoring tool here, this scribe. So put that on the edge there. Now for the purposes of the demo here, let me just scribe a line. There we are. So I've got a nice line in that aluminium. Right, now I'm going to slide this aluminium bar into the jig and move it along until I see the line in the center of the bottom hole. Now at the end of the day, you should always try and strive for something that's as accurate as possible. But, you know, I, I know I've got practical limits and, uh, well, drilling a hole on a line is just not one of my uh, fortes. Okay, here we go. through and so sure enough it's not through the center of the line so now the check will be if I do another line a little bit further down drill another hole will the hole be in exactly the same position let's give that a go well I'm off a fraction but that is pretty accurate I probably am not going to get it better than that to be perfectly honest with you and I just got to be careful when I line up this line in that bottom hole that I'm lining it up exactly the same. But I think this is going to work for me. And the other point about this is that the holes are all going to be in the, in the same position along, well, it's not quite the center here, but they're all going to be in the same position. And that's going to make it a lot easier when I put a pin in the sort of platter that slides across the top. So, what I need to do now is go and mark all the frets. Okay, so what I've done, I've clamped a ruler and the aluminium um, bar to the bench. I've got my spreadsheet with the um, distance from the nut measurement for, for all the fret positions. Uh, found a brilliant site actually on the internet for this. Um, so I shall put a link in the description. Uh, so, here we go. Okay, well it's a new day. Uh, now I marked all these slot positions on this metal bar the other day and what I've done now is I've just gone through my list here and done measurements uh, of the fret to fret distances because if you remember I measured from the nut all the way down and the reason I did that is that I know that the, the distance from the nut to the fret is is going to be as accurate as I possibly can make it. If I went on, on the fret to fret distances all the way through, I'm going to introduce inaccuracies as I go along. So I'm quite happy with that. I've, I've gone for a tolerance of about 0.5 of a mil and I can't go any closer than that. So uh, I'm happy with that. So now I've got to drill a lot of holes. So if you remember, the first thing I have to do is line up the line with my line on the uh, jig here. And I'm going into the bottom hole, so I'm lining it up with the, the line in the bottom hole. And now I'm gonna drill in the top hole. Okay, I've got a brand new drill bit. So, uh, let's go.
Well, I actually went straight through the middle. That's pretty good. Okay, uh, let's see if we can do the next one. This is a real proof of the pudding because if this is uh, if this jig works, then this hole should be in about the same place. Okay, I've got that lined up. Here we go. Okay, here it goes. Oh, look at that. Well, that's pretty close. That's close enough for me. Okay, so now I've just got another 22 holes to drill. So I um, won't bore you with me drilling holes. Um, I'll get on with that and come back to you in a minute. Okay, so I've gone through and cut all the holes and they're all pretty good. I think they're all acceptable uh, in the positions they're in, so that's okay. One thing I did notice though, obviously I'm going through this metal plate, that's the guide plate with a metal cutting drill. And as it got towards the end, I noticed the hole had got bigger. And so obviously the accuracy is gonna well you're going to lose accuracy so that's something to be aware of if you try this trick it's certainly great for the first 10 perhaps 15 um, but after that you've got to be really careful just had a closer look at this and I'm not particularly happy with the position of that one there so I'm going to uh, adjust that to make the adjustment I've cut a little slice of a piece of aluminium rod which is eight mil in diameter. I've drilled an eight mil diameter hole there and I'm gonna try and bash that into that slot. Okay, I've fired it flush. I'm gonna put it into my uh, jig, but what I'm gonna do is just mark that position once I get it in the right place. Okay, so it should give the drill something to hook on to. That's better. That's now on the line. I did also check that me bashing in that piece of aluminium dowling didn't stretch the aluminium and it didn't, so we're all good. Now then, what I need now is the old kitchen cabinet wood. Also need to make a bit of room. This will form the base, and I think it's just about long enough. That will be um, screwed down onto the base. This will form the platter that's gonna slide up and down and will have a pin in it that registers with the, uh, the, the scale there. And this piece of wood is gonna be used on each side just to keep the whole lot square and I'll have to make a slot in this so that I can get the saw in. So, without further ado, let's get to the band saw. Now my fretboards are never more than uh, 60 mil wide, so I'm gonna cut this to 70 mil, which will just allow a little bit on each edge. I want the edges of this nice and smooth, and it needs to be parallel. That looks okay. I've marked a center line down the middle of the aluminium and I've actually cut the aluminium to length. So it's just a little bit longer than the scale. Uh, and that's to allow me to drill a couple of holes in, well, hole in each end so I can fix it down to the base. I've also drawn a center line on this platter that's gonna slide back and forth. And I need to, um, I, ne I need to either create a channel on the underneath of this platter and I could do that by routing a channel 
but I think I'm just gonna cheat and actually just use some of this vinyl that I've got, uh, some my flooring vinyl, uh, because it's about the same thickness as the aluminium. I can stick two pieces, one either side, uh, and that will allow this to run in the channel between them. Now the width of my plateau is actually 69, so um, I'm going to mark that at 69. Just need to find the centre. You know, a lot of the fun in making these jigs comes from uh, finding little scraps that you can use. Uh, so <laughs> things like that, bit of vinyl, bits of cardboard, bits of wallpaper, things like that, always come in useful. <laughs> the trouble is, never throw anything away and you get a workshop full of junk, but it's amazing how you find bits that do the job. I'm going to countersink these fixing holes so it doesn't get uh, the screws don't get in the way of the pin. Okay, I've had a cup of tea and a tidy up, and now for this week's deliberate mistake. So, here is the platter that's gonna slide along this. Now the problem is, it's gonna to have to go right down to here to get to the, the last slot, and it's gonna flop down. So, what I'm gonna do is cut this board in half, down its length, and glue a bit on the end there, somehow. I mean, in my defense, I mean, I can only work with the piece of wood that I've got, and it wasn't quite long enough, so we'd have to make it a bit longer. So let's just see how much longer we need to make it. So let's say we finish about there. So it should be okay if I cut it off around that point there. Okay, so that's that done. I just need to fathom out how to fix that on there, which I don't think is going to be a problem because I'm going to have to screw some guides on anyway. So I might as well use the guides in this area to hold that piece of wood on and also put some glue on the joint as well. Now I decided that um, I was going to use these as the main guides through which I saw and I decided I wouldn't use those because they may chip. So I've got some of this um, 18 mil ply. So I'm going to make my cutting area using this plywood. I'll be honest, this is not the prettiest thing uh, ever made but at the end of the day uh, as long as it's practical that's all that's important to me right first things first i've screwed these two bits of plywood down and i've checked that they're they're both square so with with the board there and that's fine so that that works a treat 
Now then, what I need to do now is fix these other two pieces on and they have to be the thickness of the saw, which has its plastic um, depth stop on it. So they need to be held quite tightly against there. So what I'm going to do is actually screw them in place. Let's get a screw in there. I have the right fitting and don't drop my saw. Oh. Right, let's go again. Yep, I'm going to use that saw. On. Okay, that's that one. So let's just do this one. Seeing Dave the Bodger at his best here. Okay. stiff but that's a good thing right now finally now to the the last bit of this project which is to stick the the pin in place now I'm going to be using this nail which needs actually to go a little bit thinner so I need to do that in a minute but before I do that I'm going to drill a hole right the way through the wood on this last hole here like that then get a, a, a nail one of these pins here which is a little bit bigger than the hole actually but that doesn't matter in this particular case and I just need it to be sticking through a little bit I'll just pull this up here Press that onto there and hopefully we should get a mark. There we are, that's where the hole needs to be. Okay, this little nail is a little bit too thick so I'm going to see if I can make it a little bit thinner. Gloves on. See how it fits in this test piece here. That's actually okay. Okay, well I've finished this thing. I'm just going to tidy up and then give you a demonstration. Okay, so here we have this beast. Now then, I've uh, had to make a few changes. I've used this bit of off-cut timber instead of the Conti board I was going to use because, well, silly fool, there's no strength in it that way. And of course, as soon as I screwed in it, it started to split. So. That was in the bin. Anyway, uh, found a couple of bits of wood, a um, bit of oak actually, and then a bit of pine. So that has done the job. At the end of the day, I just need something just to support this as it goes down there to keep the whole lot quite rigid. Looking at this end, I have my little pin in the end there. And let's see if we just get this back into this rather tight fitting slot. This conveniently fits into those 
holes that I made. Now I appreciate this isn't the prettiest thing that you would have seen and there's a lot of people out there who've, who've produced beautiful fret cutting fixtures, jigs, whatever you like. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just want something that will do the job, um, that didn't take too long to build, didn't cost much money at all apart from buying that little aluminium strip which was a few pounds, I don't know, about three or four pounds. Um, and I don't see why this shouldn't do the job just as well as something that looks really small. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is cut some slots in the actual base because apart from anything else it helps to line the things up and it also will allow me to test this thing to make sure that it is working okay. If I do anything though, I'm going to clamp it down. does help to mark the end position so that uh, you know where you've got to put the thing to start it off. When I come to cut the slots for this bass guitar I actually want to start on this end first and the reason for that is that I, I want to keep as much of this quilted wood in the fretboard as possible so I will start cutting those small slots first. So this is why I've set this up in the way that I have so the, the, the first few slots are going to be the the narrow ones. So anyway, that's fixed at the, that first fret. Yeah, well, let's see if we can cut a slot here. <laughs> now it's always wise to do a test piece. I say that from experience because uh, this is my third attempt at uh, filming this because uh, first two attempts I realised I completely uh, well cocked up. Anyway, let me just explain what I've done. I've gone through the whole lot and I've actually marked it with a black pen now. And that's because <laughs> you may not be able to see this, but there's another set of marks there uh, which I cut originally. And that's when I discovered that um, I'd got the positioning of the, the measure here in the wrong place so that the I ran out of of base before I got to the nut. Anyway, I've moved the metal rod along a bit, so we're all sorted on that. So I've got some fret slots which are in the right place now. Thank goodness for that. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, I apologise, it's a bit of a diversion from the bass guitar refit or remake as it seems to be now. But um, I will be back to that in the next episode. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with um, an issue that I've got. And that is, I plane the top down. I needed to plane the top down. And I was looking at it the other day and I thought, oh, this looks great. And then I spotted this little hole just here. And um, the problem is, this is from the jack socket. So, what do I do? If I try and fill it, it's gonna show. So my only option is either to cover it or put a fillet of wood in there and hope that it doesn't show too much. Or do I go back to my original idea and try and do a sunburst finish on this front? And I hope that that will cover it up, but I'll still get most of the grain coming through. Yeah, let me know your ideas. Anyway, in the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Cheers.